this time, we have defensive coordinator Jeff Coons. Uh, questions for Coach Coons? Sir? Jeff, just start with, you know, your first game is D.C. How did it go from your standpoint operationally? Uh, I mean, obviously the performance went well, but what did you think of how everything was? Yeah, I thought it was, um, I thought operationally it was a smooth day. I thought, um, you know, we've got we've got a routine that, that we've been doing here for a long time on game day, and that's before we get to the stadium. That's how we meet. That's how we prepare in the last several hours leading up to the game that that hadn't changed um, once we got into the game itself it's just a matter of um, you know really good communication during the day between coaches really good communication between players and coaches on the sideline and everybody has their role and that that really hadn't changed um, so very few adjustments when it came to that so I thought it was very smooth and I thought the um, the ebbs and flows of the game and just how our assistant coaches dealt with the players and interacted with the players and how they um, you know, worked through things that, you know, games change. I talked about it last week. You can have a plan all you want, and then the game, the ball snapped, and it's different than it was. And I thought they did a really good job of managing that as the game went on. You said that they thought that alignment, assignment, they felt confident pretty quickly that the calls got in. Did you, did you think everything? Yeah, the film, well? yeah, I, uh, it's good to hear. Um, the film shows that. Uh, we got lined up. Um, there was a... Um, you know, very few instances where we weren't lined up and we weren't ready to roll with a good pad level, good stance, good demeanor, um, and that's that gives you a chance. If you don't have that, then you're already catching up when the ball snapped. And I thought we had that. The guys did a nice job, and that's a lot of that's to their credit. You know, the, the touchdowns and the turnovers, you can't go in counting on that. But was the goal to try to affect them and, and at least try to generate those? With 100%. And, and I go back to, you know, we want to play very fast. We want to get lined up, and we want to play consistent to the standard on every single snap. And if you'll just do that, good things will happen. And, you know, one thing that we say is the play doesn't care who makes it. The, there's one ball out there. There's 11 defenders. Everybody has to do their part. And if you look at every single one of those turnovers and every one of those single one of those plays, there's multiple players that had an impact on the play. It wasn't some crazy individual effort. Again, not to <laughs> negate the effort there. Some really smart football plays happened, but on every single one of those, it was 11 guys lined up, doing what they're supposed to do, and playing the game the way it's supposed to be played, fast and physical, and, and good things will happen. And when you see that, you know, you look at that game, and there were some long drives there, and, and the, on the one that, that Anthony scored on, I think that was play 10 of that drive. Now, they scored on an 11 play and I believe a 13 play drive, and a 14-play drive for a field goal, but you made them earn it. Now, the one was 10 plays, but we ended up getting a big-time stop that turned into points for us. You just have to keep playing. Now, there's nine drives, or excuse me, uh, for, uh, yeah, drive two through nine, where all three and out are takeaways. And you had this run of, wow, we're playing some pretty good defense right now. Let's just keep it going. And you got to be able to win on both ways. Both ways, there's, there's, a, there's a recipe for winning. Yeah, yeah, I thought, like I said, there's a there's a point in that game. We played 13 total possessions, and from possession two to possession nine, it was some of the best defense that I feel like we've played here just because the guys were doing their job. And that, that was at all three levels, defensive line, linebacker, secondary. And we can go on and on about individual performances because there's a lot of them. A lot of guys played really hard, played really physical, played with great technique and, and did those things. So um, there was some consistency things there, and, and there's some definitely some plays that we they got to learn from today. Your mic and your free safety all have double digit tackles. It's like catcher, shortstop, and center fielder in baseball. It, it goes back to what I said that play really doesn't care who makes it. The nose did his job at an elite level. Fatorma did his job at an elite level. And when the ball was run in between the tackles, they ran the ball 43 times on Saturday, both run, design runs, and passes. And if he's not doing his job, then we're going to have a long day. And he did it, and he did it elite. And 13 plays happened to come to him. Uh, the linebacker, same thing. You know, where those, where those plays happened, whether we were blitzing, whether we were in drop eight, whether we were in normal defense, whatever that is, the play came to him. And then our free safety, exactly the same. That guy's got to be a Swiss Army knife. We include him in the box. We include him in the high field. Um, you know, we talked about disguises and all those different things that those guys are in charge of. And I thought he did a great, great job of a lot of those things. When it comes to the confidence and the comfortability of getting lined up, is that more the coaches 
doing better or doing something different and getting this getting the call to the player? Is it something, is it more the player absorbing it or is it a mixture of both? Combination of both. Combination of both. I think the word confidence was used earlier and what we called in the game is exactly what we practiced. What we practiced was very situationally based. So there was very few surprises in the game that something was called that they were not expecting it to come. Now, we might have eight to 15 calls for that situation. So they've got to get the call. They got to get lined up and they got to execute. They can't just say, oh yeah, he's going to call this again. But that's what you do. And that's how you develop your week from a Tuesday to a Wednesday. And then you kind of start mixing it all together on Thursday and Friday and you change in the field zones and things like that. Number one challenge this week, tempo. Absolutely. We got to get lined up. I mean, explosive offense. Um, you know, I would say it's completely different than what we just saw. So going from one style of football to the other style of football, which both have shown to be very successful. Um, but these guys present challenges. Um, we know their personnel well. We've played them every year since we've been here, kind of watched how they've built their program and how they've gone about it. So yeah, we, we have to get lined up fast. Excuse me, we have to manage the tempo. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to come down to limiting explosive plays, controlling the run game, um, and, and being able to make plays when they're shown. Arnu, obviously he forced the one bad throw on the pick six, so uh, his development. Yeah, he's you know been playing that position for a couple of weeks now. He's been a quick study. Um, he's got a skill set. The skill set is, is perfect for what we want for that. He's just been learning on the run a little bit, and this was probably his biggest uh, amount of playing time, largest amount of playing time, uh, to get into a groove, to get into a kind of a consistent. And I thought he played well, played within himself. Um, didn't need anything superhuman, just did his job. And yeah, on, on Anthony's touchdown, he's exactly where we're supposed to be. It's exactly what we practiced. It's exactly um, what we expected him to do right there. And he let his ability help him, you know, make a huge play on that. Is there anything you guys can do to try to avoid second half declines, I guess would be the best way to put it. Arizona and Cincinnati, they yeah. look like they started figuring things out in the second half that you got two wins, but it almost didn't go that way. Yeah, I, I will say this about the second half. The thing that was big on the second half is that we came out and we had two stops immediately in the third quarter, all right? And that set the tone. When Coach Brown talks about the middle eight. We had an end of half stop right there where they were backed up. We would have liked to have gotten them to punt one more time, but we didn't, but we won that. And the whole point of the end of half is make sure there's no points scored. Then to come out in the second half and as you guys know, we usually are on defense to start the second half every week, whether we decide to or not. So that drive is paramount in this defense and in this program. And to be able to go out and set the tone and to do those things. Now, we're, we're going we're gonna to play defensive football in order to win the game. We'd all like to sit up here and say, hey, we kept them to 17 yards rushing. We kept them to 90 yards passing. We had four takeaways. And every single player in our defense uh, was up for player of the week in the Big 12. It's not the reality of it, not in this conference. And, you know, they're going to find some things, and we've got to make sure we stay a consistent brand of football all the way through the game. And I agree with that 100%. And we've got to continue to work on that. But even there at the, at the end of the game, we have a 10 point lead, and it's all about clock. And we gave up seven explosives in that game. Two of those came at the end of the half when we're in prevent and the end of the game when they need two scores, not one, two. And we make them kick a field goal right there. And we do a great job when it's first and goal at the six and they go three plays, they do not gain a yard and they have to kick a field goal. And then we put the hands team out there and we win the game. So um, we've got to eliminate the big explosive play. That was the big touchdown. That was one that we obviously all want back. And there was a combination of a few things on that that we can't happen. That's the gimme. Um, that we've given up at times this year. That was the one gimme right now uh, with an MA that, that can't happen. But other than that, making them drive it and consistently making them drive the football, uh, we got to do a good job with that. Cameron, um, seven touchdown catches, also a weapon in the punt return game. What's, what's he bring? What do you got to do there? Strong. He's strong. He's fast. He's strong with the ball in his hands. He's a hard tackle. Um, he's really improved. Um, you know, his awareness of space, and, and you can just see that on tape. Um, he's, he's a really good football player. The quarterback, what, what, what can you tell us about him? What do you see? He's operating at a really high level right now. And I say operationally, you know, whether they're going tempo, whether they're trying to slow it down, whether they're trying to run an RPO, whether they're trying to run, hand the ball off and getting them into the right plays, he's got undeniable arm talent. Uh, so he can make all the throws, and he's getting a lot of confidence. And over the last three weeks now, he's playing like a confident player. 
and over the last three weeks, I mean, they're they're playing offensively as good as anybody in this league, and they're you know he's a big part of the reason why. It looks like he's more of his legs too. That's yeah. been an issue lately. Yeah, he's scrambling. He can scramble. He can extend plays with his feet. Um, he can take off. He's a good football player. He's kind of that, you know. He's that guy in the spread offense right now that you hate to see because um, you know, we see it every day in practice. Well, you have your hands full with defense now, but uh, watching the special teams, yeah. uh, did you have your finger? Did they come to you for any advice? And, and what did you think of how they performed? No, no. Uh, Coach Tom, Tony Thompson, Chris Herring, those guys, they, they, they're prof true professionals, guys. They have so much experience, and they're so good at what they do. Um, they they haven't missed a beat, and, and they're probably glad I'm out of the way now, to be honest with you. But um, the thing that I was proud of on special teams, and you look at on our defense now, because now is in this role and, and with our defensive staff, we're constantly pushing special teams. Coach Brown's already talked about it today, and he's a he is a, a total three phases head coach. Neil is, but we've got a ton of guys on that kickoff team, on that punt team, on that punt block team. Reed Carrico is rushing punts through the middle of the formation and almost blocks two in that game. Ben Cutter makes a tackle on the 15-yard line on kickoff, and we're one of the top kickoff coverage teams in the country right now. And, you know, I can go down the line. Tyron Bradley, yeah, great play, touchdown. He's in the punt shield, guys, and he's been in there all year long, and he's making the checks. And he's, I mean, you, you think that's a trustworthy position, the fact that we have him in front of the punter on every single punt? And we've got guys over and over and over again. Garnett Hollis is running down on kickoff every time. Every time he runs down on kickoff, well, he doesn't come out. And you got guys like that making plays. Ty French, Torres Simmons, what he's doing. I mean, Torres Simmons is getting double teamed, and he's splitting double teams. They're going two on one. And you go back and watch some of the special teams film. Defensively, there's guys setting the tone on special teams. And I, I told the guys this morning, it's contagious. It's contagious to everybody. And when it's the MO of your team to be fast and physical and do those things, these guys that are playing on special teams, Caden Beiser is a starter. I'm all, it, like, I can go on and on how many guys on in that defensive room that maybe didn't play 90 snaps or 80 snaps on defense, but they're playing on special teams right now, and that's a huge, huge, huge part of our success. And kickoff is the first play of defense, and punt is the first play of defense on that drive. And they're, they're taking that ownership right now, and there's no job that's too small for anybody in this program, whether you're playing 60 plays or whatever. Trey Lathan's covering punts. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's about how can we win, how can we best use – our ability in this building, and that's something I talked about in the past, just from the special team standpoint. But it's no different now. How much has your message been to them? Just attitude. You know, um, you say, "Yeah, get lined up, do all these things or whatnot," but just affect the other guys. When I use the word "our standard," that's probably the biggest thing that I'm talking about. I mean, our standard of defense is to play violent, play fast, and play together, and with all parts in sync. So when we say, "Are you playing to the standard?" That's a big part of it, and having that attitude of what did I say last week? We're up by 10. We're down by 10. It doesn't matter. You play to a standard of football right now. And, you know, you go back and look at that last touchdown that, that Tyron Bradley had when Trey Lathan hits the quarterback and the ball goes flying. We all know. I mean, that was after a score. It was like, oh, here, here we go again. No, it's not here we go again. Get lined up. Go play football. And something good could happen. And, and you, all you can control is the next play. Don't be looking at the scoreboard. Don't worry about all that stuff. It doesn't matter. You play to the standard of the game, of the defense and what we've laid out and exactly how they've worked and the players have put the work in on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, period, end of story. And today we practiced, and guess what? We practiced to a standard, and we're going to try to do the same thing tomorrow. Yeah, the subs, even though there were like a lot of snaps in that game, mm -hmm. um, especially in the secondary, I don't think anybody except the corners, right? but you got good snaps, like linebacker out of your depth there too. Just what you saw and what your idea is about you know, your second string and – well, kind of we do. Out there. Yeah, it's a good question, actually. We do have depth. We do have depth. We feel really confident in that depth. Um, I think what happened on Saturday, and if you look at this, we're all creatures of, of a little bit of habit right there. But when you go, again, going back to series two through, uh, what I say there, two through nine in the drive, we're playing pretty, pretty dominant football right there with some takeaways, multiple three and outs in a row. I think we had four three and outs in a row right there. At that point in time, it really wasn't, the play counts really weren't getting up there. Um, and we did sub on one of those because we had the quick turnaround because of the long touchdown. And those guys go out and they get 
you get a fumble recovery right there on play four of the drive and we get it. So it really wasn't anything more than the rep count didn't get high until the end of the game. And then it's just kind of, hey, it's all hands on deck at that point in time, you know, and a lot of those guys that maybe didn't sub, a lot of those guys did play 18, 22 snaps on special teams. So, you know, there's still a, a huge factor in the outcome of the game. Did it ever feel odd making calls or did it come pretty quickly and naturally to you once it got going? Uh, the thing about the calls, you know, we've we've sat in there, and Neil said this after the game. We sit in there all week long as a staff, and we try to give our guys the best chance possible. And I'm just the one that decides which one we're calling on that exact play. But we have a menu, we have a layout. Um, coaches, players, I don't think anyone's really surprised of what coming, what is coming when. And we try to this week. We tried to give the guys a heads up. Hey, the first one. Here's here's what we're doing. And they kind of knew, and then we adjusted from that. And they kind of knew what we were setting up for the next one. And they kind of knew what was going to be number three. And, and that's situational. They kind of had an idea what the third and long, third and medium, P and 10, you know. So if they have a good understanding of that going on Saturday, they being the players, then calling it on game day is really just about making sure that you're trying to stay a step ahead. You're trying to understand where the game is going, you know, and how the game is kind of playing out. And then going from there and seeing, you know, how you're holding up in certain areas and what, you, what you're allowed to do. You know, that was a big part of it, too. So, um, you know, the communication on the headsets from these coaches and, and what they're bringing and what the dialogue is, is what makes it, you know, definitely possible. Um, it's, it's, it's all hands on deck. This question, are you mindful and intentional, OK, about how Baylor is going to get a read on what you're doing, just like you're trying to get a read on what Jake Spavital is doing and thinking, OK, they don't have the body of work that through the season because this is the first time you call plays. Yeah, I think I think that's what you do on Sundays. You come in, you kind of see what you put on film. You always want to look at self scout on what they're seeing when they look at film. Um, they're going to study this game more than they're going to study the others for obvious reasons, and and we know that. Um, so yeah, I think there's something that goes into that, but I, that's really after the game. When you're in the when you're in the game, you're locked in on what our guys can execute, what they've practiced, and you're going to go win the game. And you go, you go look at that first, that that last drive in the red zone. We made them kick a field goal. We called the exact same defense three plays in a row, and because that's the defense that we have the most reps on in that situation. That doesn't mean that we were locked into that call, but you got to understand like what's what are they going to do best. A, a call that they've repped three times that week because it's special or one that they know like the back of their hand. And, but that's what that situation called for. Next week might be a completely different situation, and, and we're going to be ready to adjust as needed from there. A little bit of an advantage, though, for you because if they're going to scout one game more than the others for obvious reasons, I'm sure everything in your holster wasn't used. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> advantage. Right. Right. Balances yeah, out I'll that take all those advantages I can get. Yeah, see I mean, that balances out that extra week they got. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, they've got a really good setup right now on offense. They're playing at a really high level. They've figured out the last three weeks what works for them. And that's the biggest thing. So they've got a really good idea of who they are fundamentally. And the thing about Coach Babadon, just going back and watching his career and, and Coach Aranda, like they're going to be very well coached. They're going to have things. They're very smart people. They're going to have things that they've set up. They're going to have compliments off of that. And you know that going into this game. So it's a, it's a great challenge for, for our coaches and, and our players. All right, thank you all.